Welcome to the Ten Acre Woods. My name's Mark and uh, time to put my jacket on because it is starting to get a little cool now. Uh, leaves are changing color and falling from the trees. Uh, so fall is upon us. Uh, now we did get some animals in uh, and um, we're going to show you those in a moment. Uh, one of the roosters that uh, that came in a little while back is this one here. His name's Mocha. And uh, he tends to like to hang around with people. Whenever you walk by, he's right there. He is the alpha. And he's in with Sheldon. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Did we get you a friend? <laughs> We're going to see your little friend there in a bit. <laughs> so this here's Mocha. And uh, he, is, uh, he is alpha in this yard. He doesn't go out. He basically kind of stays in uh, with the other two here. Uh, Bongo and I don't think this one has a name. <laughs> so not all of the birds have names. Uh, we try to name as many as we can. Um, Tara may have named one of them, uh, that one there. But uh, I am unsure as to the name. Sheldon, stay in one spot, buddy. Stay in one spot. Now, Sheldon will be going inside. Uh, yes, won't you? Yes, you're going to be going inside. <laughs> and um, he, um, it, the big concern with him is, well, we did have an incident with Levi where Levi was kind of picking on him when he went in. Um, but we don't want him to wander into the pond. So we're still a little concerned uh, with him. <laughs> we don't want him to go for a swim in the icy water. Uh, especially during freeze up. Uh, so we just find it's uh, it's safer for him to be inside. Uh, plus you're gonna have, yes, you're gonna have a little buddy, aren't you? <laughs> you're a silly boy. <laughs> hey Levi, what are you doing? <laughs> you're funny boy. <laughs> uh, so we're getting ready for, um, well, for the snow that's uh, and the cold weather that's gonna be coming. Um, these uh, here, uh, so this is something that, uh, you know, work in progress. Uh, we decided that we were going to do this hinged idea where these boards would come out uh, and then we would be able to close them. Uh, but of course, as you can see here, it's all delaminated. Uh, probably just used the wrong kind of wood. Uh, this one's in pretty good shape because of course it was down most of the time. These ones have been holding water and they just have to go. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna be removing this, we're gonna be putting poly up along here, uh, very similar to what we've done over in the uh, rabbit hutch over there. Seems to work really well. During, the, during last winter, we found that it was actually warmer outside on a sunny winter day um, than it was inside the building because the sun's just not getting in there. Uh, so that's something we're gonna do. Uh, we've got uh, Petunia here chewing her cud. And we've got Turbo. And we've got Charlotte. <laughs> it looks like little George here. Oh, hi, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're an ankle biter, aren't you, buddy? You just want attention. You're an attention hog. Yes, I know. Hi. Hi. Yes, hi. <laughs> He's going to be at my uh, ankles here the whole time. Uh, the alpaca and uh, Coco over here. We've got, uh, looks like Holly and we've got Billie Jean. So these two are um, a year and a half old. And then we've got Blackie. So Blackie is the matriarch of the, uh, of the yard. She's the alpha female <laughs> and she's the oldest. Uh, and then we've got the two newer ones, which is Tulip here. Hi, Tulip. How are you doing, girl? So Tulip and her sister, I don't know if it's actually sister, but we'll, uh, they came in together and they're both girls, so we'll go with that. Uh, this is Daisy the sheep. So of course we have Daisy the pony. Uh, and what's funny is these two will come to the back and uh, they'll look up because we often throw apples uh, off the deck over into the pen. Um, and we walk out and we hear this bah, this really deep bah. <laughs> and look down, of course, there is the two of them uh, looking up at us. So we throw a couple apples. 
Um, and of course we feed back behind the house as well. We've got a few different feed areas that we do. Uh, if it's raining, we will feed them inside the shelter here. Um, just because, you know, keep them out of the... Keep, ow, that one was a pinch. You didn't just grab my jeans on that one, you pinched my leg. What is wrong with you? You, you are just so funny. <laughs> oh man, the problem with having... This one was, was hand raised as along, with, uh, uh, along with guys, which he came in with. Guys had passed away um, earlier this year or uh, yeah, I think it was earlier like in springtime. So now he's just, he's, you know, you want a buddy, don't you? Um, but they can get really friendly and always want to be with you. And they, they use that, their beak as, you know, they, they'll pinch because they got no other way to, you know, they can't shake hands and do things like humans do. So they try to get your attention in other ways. <laughs> hey bud, you are funny. Anyway, moving along, he's probably gonna be following me. Um, so we have Levi, uh, we have Meadow, and we have Daisy. Hi Daisy girl, how are you? Yeah, and somebody that's come quite a long ways here is Moira. So when Moira first came in, <laughs> She was just petrified of people. Hi, Moira. Hi. Yes. So you'd never be able to do that when she first came in. Uh, but, you know, she's starting to come around, aren't you, girl? Yes. So she is a Shetland sheep. And that's why she's so small. And who do we have in here? This is Bronwyn. Uh, so this area here is where the pigs hang out. Uh, so they've got their little nest here. And you can see the height difference. Uh, so it's low over by the door. Uh, so we put hay in here and there's quite a bit of hay in here during the winter months uh, and this is where the uh, the pigs will nest. And I can see one of them right there. Uh, so that's Petey. I'm not sure where Piper is. Uh, she's either in the back or she's rooting around somewhere. Petey, what are you doing? Are you sunbathing? So Petey's another one that comes to the back uh, sometimes we'll walk out the back door and we'll just see him just staring up at us <laughs> saying where are the apples and how can you resist not throwing a couple of apples out there for him. <laughs> hey PD? Yeah, I guess Piper's probably, well she could be anywhere really. Uh, they blend in, so, oh they blend in so well. <laughs> there she is. Uh, I didn't see you. You're sunbathing. <laughs> How's the girl? Hey? Yes. How's the girl? Oh, yes. Yeah. See, once you start rubbing her, she's not bad. Um, Petey is just grumpy. Um, <laughs> hey? Yes. Oh, you're just having a nice little sunbathe. <laughs> All right. I'll leave you to it. So we have some visitors that just arrived uh, to bring some donations of some uh, different crafting materials, it brought some beet tops and all kinds of different stuff for some of the animals. Uh, and we did have an animal that came in uh, this past week. Uh, so it's a goose and it's, uh, we believe it is a uh, brant goose. And a brant goose is a coastal bird. Now normally you see them year round on the coast but they do move inland uh, and we're assuming that um, this one here was up near Wake, Lake Manitoba, Lake Winnipeg area, our interlake region, uh, and was found in this area and unfortunately got attacked by a dog. So the person that found, or the person who is the dog owner, um, grabbed the goose right away. There were some head injuries no injuries, broken legs, wings, or anything of that nature that we could see. Everything looks good. Uh, but the secondary eyelid that a goose will have, they'll have another eyelid that kind of uh, goes sideways. Uh, and it's a protective, and more so from what I understand, it's more of, you know, seawater and, and getting salt in the eyes kind of thing. Um, and it's kind of a uh, semi-opaque uh, eyelid. 
Uh, so those ones were kind of closed and it looked like there was some swelling happening there. Uh, and that was only this past week. So we just noticed yesterday, I think it was, the swelling had gone down and the eyes are now completely open. Um, so what we're going to do is with these visitors that have come, uh, Tara thought this is a great opportunity for us to release the goose out into the yard uh, and set it free so it can find its, uh, its family. He's talking to them. Oh uh, yeah. Well, and, and the Brant goose is quite a bit smaller Small, than very much smaller. Yeah, than the other geese. <laughs> They're like, what's going on here? Who is that? And quite a different honk. All right. Oh, <laughs> rooster. <laughs> So we're not sure if it's female, male. Kind of looks like a juvenile. Are we going with female? I think so. Okay, so we'll call her she. I wonder if it's gonna fly. Yeah, we don't know, uh, do her wings appear intact and everything appears good. Uh, she just needed a little break after her the- Her eyelids were swollen over, over, so. Oh, get comfy, whoa, shake it off. And sometimes when this happens, they tend to hang around they don't here. Leave. Nobody wants to leave. <laughs> so, uh, wild animal and it do yeah, and they don't go anywhere. There we go. Stretch the wings. Okay. Go towards the water. It's supposed to fly. <laughs> No, oh, they work. It just comes home. <laughs> <laughs> the wings work. Yeah. All right, well, we'll have to just keep an eye on her. But you can definitely see the size difference <laughs> between her and the other ones. <laughs> uh. As the sun gets lower in the horizon, we have finally completed this section. So looking good. Uh, it is, um, it's just got these boards here to fasten it in place. Uh, they'll all be removed during the uh, spring. Uh, but uh, now, now it has all that natural lighting. Yeah, and so the water is gonna go here. 
Uh, and then we have a uh, cord that comes out of here that will um, uh, run the heat for the de-icer. Oh yeah, and the eaves trough up here uh, drains down into it. So it's kind of an automatic watering, so to speak. Uh, and then there is a slight swale in this area here that goes over there's a bridge that runs across and goes over into the trench. So in the spring, the whole idea is this area, uh, it runs down off. It does get quite mucky here in the spring. Uh, so it's because a couple years ago we unearthed everything to uh, install the pond. So uh, things haven't quite settled, but it's been getting better. Last year was better than the year before. What is that? Is there water in there? Is that a bath? <laughs> Tulip gonna have a bath? <laughs> Uh, okay, so we put a part wall in here because uh, they only need a small area to get in uh, and we have concerns because whenever Carl and Billy come in, uh, they like banging on things. Uh, so what we did is we actually took this 4x4 four four, uh, post, uh, I don't know what you want to call it, but we drove this metal bracket into the ground about three feet uh, and then this 4x4 four four comes up here. And then this 2x4 then anchors up to the top on there. Uh, so this is hopefully, hopefully Billy proof. <laughs> so this is what it looks like from in here, which is really nice because in the winter time when it's cold outside, but it's sunny, uh, we're still going to get that natural light in uh, and we're still going to get uh, that warmth in. It's just that one door uh, that will remain open. Uh, and the pigs are now tucked in. <laughs> they got into their little uh, nest here a little while ago while we were just putting up this last segment. Hey Daisy, what do you think of the place? <laughs> so we are now going to head inside to check out the uh, other animals that you haven't seen yet. Um, but what I will do is I will, uh, on my way in there, you can watch uh, what happened midweek when the three boy, the three, three male pigs went home. Uh, so here's the clip uh, that took place during the week. There's only one way out, boys. <laughs> That's this way. All right, here they go. Ah, look at them go, they're professional. Now, as long as they can all fit through. Oh, yeah. Okay. And now to go in. Move over. Calm down. Calm down, boys. Go to the light. <laughs> Go outside. I'm just saying goodbye to you, Mark. Oh, yeah. You're okay. You're okay. You're, you're not going that no, way. you're not coming back this way. <laughs> as soon as one turns around, they'll... Uh... Um, grab one of those sheets, yeah. maybe. Hang on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. See, as one as one goes in, grab... Well, grab one of those sheets, I think, behind. To corral them. There we go. As soon as okay, one goes. well, that works too. There we go. The three little piggies. <laughs> Once we get them in, we can see if we can pull it, but no big deal. Oh, look at Tiana. I built her. Oh. <laughs> Just saying, I built that one. There's a couple pounds of pig. There's a couple pounds of pig in there. <laughs> All right. I was a little concerned about the the weight limitations, but okay, that worked well. Watch this. Pigs. that was pigs are doing Oh yeah, I guess that works. They're scaring them now. You'll have better grip anyways. Yeah. They were slipping all over the place. 
There we go. Okay, now we just got a toe here. She's having a poop. I mean, he's having a poop. You're him while he's having a poop. <laughs> We're going to get poo all over you. Annabelle, back up. Right? It's okay. It's just poop. <laughs> Do you want a tie? Yeah, pig poo. Sure. Right oh, oh, All right, boys. You guys, you girls, gonna take care of them? Yeah. All right. I feed them. You feed Don't them? Feed the other pigs. No, I feed these pigs. As long as somebody's feeding them. I you know yeah. have a right over it. Pig. So, <laughs> mommy and daddy feed the big pigs, and you guys take care of the little ones. Yeah. All right. You know, we put all this extra lighting in here and it was so much brighter, but for filming, it needs to be even brighter. Right, girls? <laughs> so these are the two, uh, two female pot bellies that came in last week. Uh, they've kind of moved their nest from the other corner, because of course they were over there, uh, and now they're in this area here. So we have some people that are interested in these girls. Um, so nobody has been confirmed yet, but uh, we want to make sure that they are going to a good and loving farm home. Uh, now moving over into this area here. So this is where we put Mama Hen and her guineas. Actually, yeah, there they are there. So we did lose the one, the little um, peanut colored one or the chipmunk colored one so there's just the three uh, and this is <laughs> uh, this is mama mama Muscovy and she actually has eight little ones so she's been sitting on nests all summer all fall and they've just basically rotted under her uh, so we didn't think that these ones were viable, <laughs> but uh, obviously they out were. <laughs> How many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I, uh, they're almost all visible. They just keep coming out. Right, Mama? And of course, she's all kind of puffed up uh, because they were all underneath her. So she'll, uh, she'll put her wings down to the ground and then make the room underneath. Uh, so, like I mentioned, the three pigs got, went home, and, and as you saw. Uh, and then what had happened was, when was that? That was last night? Last night, I guess it was. <laughs> uh, Terry gets a call during the day, and it was a lady that lives in southern Manitoba, and she found a sheep that she believes fell out of the back of a uh, transport a truck of some kind. Uh, it was a lamb. Uh, it was injured. She got it about a week ago uh, and there were some injuries on the head. So uh, she actually went uh, and was talking to a vet about, you know, proper care and, um, um, and was there a place that this lamb could go to because she didn't have the proper fencing. Uh, so the vet actually told her to contact the 10 Acre Woods, which is great. So thanks for that shout out. Uh, and Tara went down and uh, met last night uh, and picked up this little lamb. And she was so excited, and if you've probably seen it, if you've been watching our Facebook page, uh, you'll notice that it is a little black lamb. So Tara was so excited, and she was so happy because she has always wanted a little black lamb. <laughs> so also, if you've been following uh, Instagram and Facebook, you will have seen we don't have a name for this little one. So she is currently just the black lamb. <laughs> hey, an extremely friendly, very docile. Uh, we've been giving her the bottle, uh, but she's been actually drinking out of the bowl really well. Uh, so we wanted to make sure that uh, she had uh, enough nutrients in her. So we were, uh, we were giving her the bottle, hey? And she's just the cutest little thing. Very docile. Um, so she will likely stay in here and then Sheldon will, um, will come in with her. Hi, how are you? Your, your mouth is wet. <laughs> so she is very docile. Um, she's not skittish at all. Uh, and she'll make a great, uh, a great partner for Sheldon. Uh, now as for the breed, so we're not entirely sure of her breed. 
Uh, her wool almost looks like a haired sheep. Uh, it's, it's different because uh, usually when we get lambs in, uh, they've got the little curly tips, the little baby lamb wool, uh, but this is more like a hair. So Bronwyn is a haired sheep, uh, and she is a cross, uh, a dorper cross, and a dorper breed is a type of haired sheep. Uh, we don't believe this is dorper, um, but uh, we believe it is a, a haired sheep. Dorper uh, usually are, are white and black. So um, if you have a name, uh, leave it down in the comments. And what Tara and I will do is likely throughout the week, uh, we will go through all the names and find one that best suits her. <laughs> there's, been a, <laughs> there's been quite a few uh, names that have come out. Uh, of course, Baba, as in Baba Black Sheep. And um, I think someone even mentioned Whitey, <laughs> which, <laughs> well, I guess in a contrast, yeah, sure. Whitey for a black one. Midnight uh, was another one. Hey, what name do you want? So she's drinking out of the bowl really well. So I think um, what we might do uh, is forego the bottle. Oh, <laughs> okay, well. And just walk right into the bowl, hey? <laughs> we might just forego the bottle and um, just put some milk right in there. Uh, just to make sure that she is getting uh, the nutrients she needs. Uh, she was on a calf milk uh, when she came to us. And uh, what we do is we put, um, we put them on goat's milk. Uh, so it's a powdered goat's milk that we use. Uh, and it is uh, higher in fats, uh, which is really good for small animals. Uh, and it's kind of our go-to. So goat's milk we use, we always have on hand. Uh, and uh, whenever we need milk for really any kind of animal, uh, goat's milk is our go-to milk. Uh, okay, so moving over, of course, we have the guineas in here. And that's where they're going to be uh, hanging out. And the uh, young ones, once they get old enough, then we'll likely put them in there. But these guys are going to be in here for the winter. Uh, and then we have the rabbits. Uh, which they have been getting more used to humans, which is good. Uh, when Tara first came in here, they were jumping all over the place, uh, like up and freaking out. So um, this morning, uh, you can see there's, uh, we put some vegetables in here, some leafy greens, and uh, they weren't so bad. Uh, so we do have homes, uh, a few farms lined up for them. Um, but I think that's likely going to happen next week. Uh, so we're going to uh, hang on to them. Uh, and they've been doing really good health-wise. So I don't believe we've lost any of them, uh, which is good. Because when we got the batch in uh, a month and a half ago, I think it was, uh, there were 360 rabbits in total. And we did lose some. Uh, the stress of the move and just the stress of the whole situation um, they weren't uh, they weren't healthy to begin with where they were coming from uh, they were living outside they didn't you know have that nutrition that uh, that maybe they uh, they would have needed because a lot of them were fairly young so that is them they may be gone by next video so this is uh, this could possibly be the last look <laughs> from these guys but Tara has been um, uh, doing a wonderful job on Facebook just networking so we've kind of just started naming this uh, Goose Brant because, uh, because of the Brant Goose. Uh, it just seems kind of fitting. Uh, but she is still here. So she was, while we were doing the poly on the building, uh, she was just squeaking away with her little, uh, uh, her little sounds and it was cute. So at one point I looked up and I was like, is there a bird flying overhead? A wild bird and I'm like oh right that's the wild bird that is <laughs> in our yard <laughs> uh, that's funny so um, she may stay we've had Canadian geese that have been here and have stayed for a year or even two years before they've flown off uh, so we'll see what happens so there she is although she might just pick up and go once the uh, the weather turns so I'm up here looking for the boys, and I don't know if you can see them, but they're right through there. 
So they're eating away. I'd like to thank all of you for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this content. And again, if you have any names for that little lamb that we have, uh, pop it down in the comments. Uh, Tara and I will make a decision and figure out what the best name and uh, what fits. I hope you all have a wonderful week and we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.